Hi there, it's Rob from Oxfoot. Welcome to another Will It Deploy video, where we try to automate the deployment of different technologies using Octopus Deploy. Today, we're going to take a look at deploying a Spring Boot web application to Amazon's web services, Elastic Beanstalk, including cloud infrastructure provisioning and a zero downtime production deployment. Let's get started. Now let's take a look at our sample app and it's called random quotes and it gives us just that a random quote. So if I hit the big green refresh button, I get a new random quote each time. Now, this is the same application that we've seen in different videos. However, it's been ported to Java. If we head over to IntelliJ, we can see it's now using the Spring Boot framework. And the other dependency I'd like to point out is that we're also using the Timeleaf template engine. If we look at the project structure, you can see we have a single controller and a single templated view. So this is quite simple. And I also have a stub repository with all the quotes. So they are hard coded, but we can improve this in a future video. The other thing I'd like to point out is our application properties. I have two custom properties. One is called app version and the other one is called environment name. And I have two profiles, one for staging and one for production. And each one of those profiles sets different values for these. The app version is being set to the Maven project version and the environment name just reflects the environment that's deployed. So if we take a look at our application again, you can see in the footer, it tells us the version we're running and in what environment. So that helps us see where we've been deployed and we'll explore that a little bit later. So the big question is, will it deploy? Yes, it will. Let's walk through the solution. I have a local Octopus instance running and I'm going to take a quick look at our infrastructure. I have two environments staging in production and I also have one deployment target and it's called Octopus server and it's actually a tentacle installed on the same server as our Octopus server. And I'll talk about that a little bit later. What I'd like to highlight is that I've already added an Amazon Web Services account. I've named my account Developer Playground. And if we go into it, you can see I've specified my AWS access key and secret key. And that's all I need to specify to be able to interact with AWS safely and securely. Now I'm going to head over to my random quotes project. And if we take a look at my deployment process, you can see that I have five steps to be able to deploy my application with cloud infrastructure provisioning and zero production downtime. Our first step is to transfer our package, that is our Spring Boot jar file to the Octopus server. And the only reason we're doing this is that so the subsequent steps that are also run on the Octopus server have access to that package. So the second step then copies that package to Amazon's S3, which is their simple storage service. And so in the future, this should be a native step so that you don't have to do it in two separate steps. Our third step is to deploy an AWS CloudFormation template, and this provisions our cloud infrastructure. In this case, we're creating an Elastic Beanstalk application. That's a platform as a service or pass application with two environments. Now, if we jump over to AWS and go to Elastic Beanstalk, we can see I've already done a test deployment. So I have a random quotes application and I have two environments, random quotes one and random quotes two. I haven't named them staging and production because we're gonna go through a blue green deployment for zero downtime. Uh, I've kept them generic and the only thing that happens is the URL switch between the environments when we do, do our deployments. Now we can head back to our deployment process. The next step would be to deploy to our green staging environment. So that would be the Elastic Beanstalk environment that's considered the non-production environment. So we would deploy to that always uh, with the appropriate configuration. And the final step, if it was a production deployment, would be to swap the green and production environment URLs. But let's take a little bit of a deeper look. 
The first step of note is the AWS script step that copies our package or jar file to S3. So if we take a look, all of the AWS steps follow the same pattern. They're all run on the Octopus server. They all require an AWS account variable. And we require a variable just so that it makes it easier in case you need to use different accounts for different environments or scope them as you need. It's quite handy. We always require the AWS region. And in this case, we're specifying our script. Here, it's very simple, AWS3 copy. Then we specify the path from that previous step, which just copies it to the Octopus server, and then our S3 bucket name and file name. The next step is to provision our cloud infrastructure. And this is done by a deploy AWS CloudFormation template step. And so this step is very similar to the previous one. You still have to specify your AWS account variable and your region, but there's a few more properties required when deploying to CloudFormation or things you can tweak. And the final section is template and parameters. And with CloudFormation templates, they're very, very flexible. There's a lot of ways to accomplish the same thing. So in this case, I've specified a template and I'm using Octopus variable substitution to be able to substitute values that I want in my templates. And I'm doing this instead of having parameters and then binding things like that. But again, there's a lot of different ways to do this. In this case, my template is creating my Elastic Beanstalk application. It is creating an application version, which could then be deployed and it's creating my two environments. To actually deploy our web application, we're running another AWS script step. And so if we take a look at it, again, same thing, you need your AWS account variable, you specify your region, and then we've got a larger script here. Our script has to do a couple things. The first is to determine which is the blue or production environment and which is the green or staging environment, because we're deploying to our staging environment here. Next, we also get the latest project release. That's the one associated with this deployment. Then we run a very simple AWS command. Just say AWS Elastix Beanstalk update environment. We specify the green environment name or staging and what application version we're going to deploy. The final setting we're passing is the active spring profile. That lets us ensure we're using the correct configuration settings for the appropriate environment. And then we just wait for our deployment to complete because subsequent steps need that to be done. So we just pull and we could be a little more robust here, but uh, for this purpose, that's, that's just fine. Now that we've successfully deployed to our staging environment, if we were deploying to production, it's a very simple process. It's just another AWS script step and the script itself is very, very simple. We just retrieve the green and blue environment names, that's staging and production. We just execute another AWS command line call. AWS Elastic Beanstalk swap environment C names and we provide the two environment names and that's it. Now let's create a release and see everything in action. So I'll click create release and I'm going to call this 1.0.0 because that's the last version that I've built and packaged. I'll click save. Yes, I want to deploy to staging. I can just review the summary quickly and click deploy. So our deployment was successful. Now let's head back to AWS, go to our random quotes application and our environment. We can see that the deployment was successful. And if we go to our staging application, navigate to our random quotes, things look good. Version 1.0 was deployed to staging. And if we click the refresh button, we get some random quotes. So things look good. Now I'm just going to deploy to production. So our production deployment was successful. If I head back to our Elastic Beanstalk app and refresh the page, 
we can see that random quotes one, which was previously our staging or green environment, has now been updated and its URL has been swapped. If we jump into it and click on the URL, it's now our production URL. We can see that it's now running version 1.0 in production. And if I click refresh a few times, I can see some great random quotes. In this episode, we successfully automated the deployment of a Spring Boot web application, deploying to AWS Elastic Beanstalk with cloud infrastructure provisioning and a zero downtime deployment. If there's a technology you'd like to see in a future video, let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below, including a link to start a free 45 day trial of Octopus Deploy. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're adding new videos weekly. Happy deployments.